Since our last video, I was honestly surprised by how many people were interested in my Mac Mini portable setup. And some of you even suggested taking it a step further by adding a power bank to make it fully portable. And I thought that is such an interesting idea. So the first thing that popped up in my mind was finding a power bank with an AC outlet. That way, whenever I wanted portability, I could just grab the Mac Mini and the power bank and head out. So I did some research, but it did not really work out. Most of the power bank were either way too bulky to carry around or they cost almost the same as the Mac Mini itself. At that point, I pretty much gave up on the whole idea. But then one day, while scrolling to Reddit, I came across this post. A guy showed his custom Mac Mini case which looked awesome. But what really caught my attention was that he was actually running the whole thing off a power bank. And I thought, yes, that is exactly what I've been searching for. So I spent hours digging deeper, researching and trying to really understand how it all works. And after a while, I finally got it. This is how he managed to make his Mac Mini run on a power bank by solving a chain of questions step by step. The first question is, how did he use a power bank as the power supply? Well, to answer that, we need to take a quick look at how the Mac Mini power system works. So basically, when you plug your Mac Mini into an AC outlet, which can range anywhere from 100 to 240 volts, the internal power supply will convert that into a stable DC voltage to run the logic board. What this guy did was remove that step entirely and fed a stable 12 voltage directly from the power bank straight into the Mac Mini DC input. But here's a catch, power bank don't give you a fixed output. They usually adjust based on what device you plug in. Like if I charge my phone, it's only pulled about 5 volts at 3 amps. But if I connect my MacBook, the power bank now cranks up to 20 volts at 3 amps since the Mac Mini won't run if the voltage is jumping around. The question is, how did he stabilize it? So here's what he did. He used two small modules that connect between these two devices. The first is a trigger circuit that asks the power bank for 20 volts at 5 amps. Then that goes into a buck converter, which steps it down to a consistent 12 volt output for the Mac Mini. With this setup, even though the power bank itself fluctuates, the Mac Mini still get a stable power supply to run normally. And that is basically how it works. Now, if you are curious and want to do it yourself, I'll show you exactly how you can put everything together. The first step and probably the trickiest part is opening up your Mac Mini and locating the DC input. Just take it slow, go step by step, and carefully work your way until you find these two tiny golden screws that mark the DC input. We are going to unscrew them and wire them to the female part of the barrel connector. And that is extremely important. Make sure you know which pole is negative and which is positive. Because if you mix them up, worst case scenario, you will have to buy a brand new Mac. So double check everything and make sure you know what you're doing. Now, when it's done, just put everything back together. And at this point, your Mac Mini should look like this. Now we are going to connect the male part to the buck converter output and also hook up its input to the trigger circuit. And if you did everything right, you've got yourself a fully portable Mac Mini running on a power bank. And of course, the whole point of making this setup portable is having a monitor that light and easy to carry around. And I think I found just the one. This is the Ucolor J5 from Uperfect. It is the perfect size big enough for multitasking, editing, or watching movies, but still super thin and compact. Just over two pounds, so it easily slips into my bag if I need to move around. Despite being portable, it doesn't compromise on performance. We are talking a 7.3 inch 4K IPS display with a 120 Hz refresh rate. Everything looks crisp, sharp, and super smooth. The J5 also cover 100% Adobe RGB and 100% DCI P3 color gamut with a 1000 to 1 contrast ratio. So if you're doing photo work or video editing and need precise, accurate color, this monitor has you covered. And the best part, I can plug it straight into my Mac Mini with just a single USB-C cable. 
So if you're looking for a monitor that balance between portability, color accuracy, and high quality, this J5 from Uberfix is a solid choice. I'll leave the link in the description for you to learn more. Also, some of my personal discount code. Make sure you check it out. So we got everything run as expected, but we can't just leave it like this. I need a way to put everything together so I can actually carry it out. My original plan was to 3D print a custom case to hold it all, but unfortunately, the 3D printer that I ran was too small to handle it. So I improvised. I used my old foldable case from my previous Uperfect monitor and attached all the accessory to the back with adhesive tape. And I know it is not a perfect fit. The screen is slightly bigger than my old monitor, but honestly, it's get the job done. Now I can pretty much go anywhere I want without worry about a power sword. Whenever I need to go out, I just break it into two parts, the case and the monitor. It take me about 30 seconds to get the whole setup up and running. And you might be wondering about stability. Will it crash in the middle of work? Well, so far it's been pretty stable for me. I've been testing it for the past two weeks with daily tasks from web browsing to video editing, and it worked flawlessly. When doing casual tasks, the Mac Mini draw about 10 to 20 watts and around 25 to 40 watts during video rendering. But keep in mind, did it choose a two week of testing? It could possibly crash in week three. And I think that is something you need to accept when you are modding your device. And for the battery, I'm using the Ugreen 25,000 mAh power bank. It lasts around 3 to 3.5 hours for web browsing and casual admin tasks, and about 2 hours for more intense work. And honestly, it's not enough for my phone work session, but the nice thing when you power your Mac Mini this way is you can actually plug in the Type-C charger whenever you need more time. So the setup might look cool, but the big question still remain. Is this practical and should you even try it? I would say it depends. If you are a technical person and you like DIY your device, yes, you can definitely try it. The principle is very easy to understand as I explained, hopefully. But if you are just a general Mac Mini user, I don't think you should try it. Use your Mac Mini as usual. This is not a proper way to power your Mac Mini and there's many things could possibly go wrong. Like one thing is very clear that you are losing your warranty. And the second thing, if you open your Mac Mini incorrectly, you could break a little uh, wires or you could possibly lose one of the screws so it can mess up your whole computer. So if you're not technical, just avoid it. If you like DIY and you understand about technical thing, Go for it, it's a super fun project. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to Arial Studio. I was able to understand this whole concept and try it myself thanks to his videos. He's super informative and really know his stuff. Definitely one of the DIY channel, you need to check it out. So thank you all for watching and let me know in the comment what do you think about this portable setup? What should we try next with the Mac Mini? Please leave some in the comment below. Thank you all again and I'll catch you on the next video.